uh, we want to continue following our breaking news this morning. The situation on the Kong Atimpoku Road, I believe, uh, where we understand that a group of Western Togoland soldiers um, has blocked the road. Uh, we have been following that for you this morning. Joining me in studio is uh, my colleague Joseph Akagble, who is also on that beat for us this morning with some more details of what we have learned so far about the situation over there. Great to have you in the studio, Joseph. Uh, just for the sake of context, I mean, for those who are hearing the news this morning, I want to just remind them of what this group is, why we are here at this moment. So this is a group that has been agitating for independence. And for those who know Ghana's history, you know that, I mean, proud to Ghana attaining independence, the parts of their country, the western, the, the Volta region and the current Oti region were not part of the Gold Coast colonies. And so we had to go through a plebiscite where uh, the people voted to be part of the then independent Ghana. Mm -hmm. But now this group contends that that particular process was not lawful as they, they who hail from the area were of the view that they shouldn't join Ghana. And so for years they have been agitating action that that part of the country be declared independent of Ghana. In fact, there have been occasions where their leadership have declared those areas independent. They've been arrested by the security agencies and brought here to Accra on the charges of treason. Mm. But what happens mostly is that uh, once they put them before the courts, the state truncates the case against them. And so that is where we have come from. In the last three months, there have been instances where they've put up billboards at parts of the country in parts of the eastern region welcoming people into western togoland and also in parts of the volta region now this morning we understand that as early as 2 a.m at dawn wow. uh, we understand that these individuals block the entry points into the volta region and so there's a part from Accra into Sogakope that has been blocked. Then there's also another part, the Atimpoku area, the Eastern Region side into the Volta region has also been blocked. And so they used uh, the, 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 the blocks, they blocked the road, and uh, they were burning ties and holding uh, sticks among others, preventing cars from entering the region because they said that it is their region, they have the right to determine who comes into it. Uh, the update we are getting from the regional minister was confirmed that even on the Joy FM we spoke to one of the individuals who is part of this agitation and he tells us that they've apprehended three policemen, Ghanaian policemen who have been arrested by these persons who are demonstrating wow. and the, the Volta Regional Minister Dr. Achiba Lecha tells us that uh, they are working to try and rescue these three individuals from the custody of this secessionist movement. And, and to be able to block the road is a very bold move Joseph. Yes, I mean uh, because they have the numbers and they went there at a time that I mean, a lot of people uh, were sleeping, and so the security agents, you understand, have moved in. Uh, we asked at the time I was, I was coming into the studio, and the information we had picked up was that they had been able to make some progress. They've been able to remove some of the blockades, and so the vehicular traffic has started moving a bit. But uh, for at least an hour and a half plus, uh, there, there was no movement on the road. We heard from persons who were stranded. Most of them actually thought that there was an accident that had occurred until they got closer before they got information that uh, this is what has happened there. Well, Volta Regional Minister has assured that uh, his men are doing their best to try and uh, deal with this particular situation and that the soldiers have been called uh, to intervene. And so they are all working hand in hand uh, to try and get into and uh, to get the situation under control. And so we can see in our shots yeah. uh, the videos from that and particular location. This morning, the situation there um, at the Hong at Mpoku Road. And what's interesting, we spoke to one eyewitness who said they, they, they have not been able to identify uh the group i mean you can't tell who belongs to that group what does it say it tells you that i mean security have a lot on their hands uh, in order to contain this particular situation and obviously the post event analysis once the, situ the situation is brought under control will raise the point about how the state has handled this particular matter over the last uh, two or three years because we've made arrest we've prosecuted but we've discontinue the case against them all through and so one will raise the issue that i mean this is what may have emboldened them to take this particular step uh, for now the regional minister explains that the aim is to take charge of the area in his own words he says it's an operation they're undertaking it's a security situation that they have and they intend to ensure that i mean ghana remains safe and ghana remains united and he's assured that the security agencies would deal with the matter yeah. And one of the things I was wondering, Joseph, was whether or not we didn't pick up intelligence. But we'll come to that in a bit. But this morning, we're also hearing that the Western Togolanders attacked the Mepe and Aveyme police stations in the North Tong constituency and made away with weapons kept in the armories. Uh, Border Region correspondent Fred Kwame Asari joins us with more. Uh, Fred, what can you report this morning? What are you hearing from where you are? 
Yeah, so information I picked was that at about um, 1 a.m., some armed men who identified themselves as uh, Western Togolanders broke into the uh, Mepe police station and then the Avaime police station. They were first at the uh, Avaime police station where the... Uh, Asked the police officers there, they overpowered them, asked them to go naked. They took their um, uniforms and phones, locked them up in their cell. There was one uh, inmate there, they freed the man, and then they put the police officers who were on duty at the time in the cell, locked them up before they broke into the army and then made away with uh, some weapons. I'm also told that they also took a cellular phone, uh, a computer, and then a printer away. These operations happened simultaneously. They were at the Mepe uh, police station and whilst others were at the uh, Avaime police station. So, so when those at the uh, Mepe police station finished their operations, they hoisted a uh, Western Togoland flag there and then absconded the scene and joined their colleagues at Avaime. I'm told they are about uh, 50 in number. So at the Avaime police station, they did the same thing, uh, took over the police station and then also uh, injured one um, police officer. Uh, in the process. I have uh, also received reports that they seized two vehicles belonging to the police officers and then drove one away from the scene. However, uh, uh, as, the, uh, as time goes by and then they realize that uh, the daylight was coming out, the, uh, the numbers started reducing whilst others were there chanting war songs and jubilating the uh, victory. The numbers kept reducing. Okay, and so a while ago, an eyewitness told us that the security personnel were coming in to uh, sort of normalize the situation over there. Uh, how uh, successful have they been in doing so? Well, the, the last time I spoke to my uh, informator, whoever is giving me the information, that he mentioned that yes, they, they dispatched a team from the uh, regional police headquarters and then the divisional police station. So they are trying to calm the situation down. But then, uh, as we speak, uh, the numbers have reduced a bit. They, they are not as much as they were when the operation started. So I should say that the police is trying to uh, take over the situation and then ensure that calm is restored in the area. What are the people over there saying? How are they reacting to all that is going on? Well, most of them are terrified. Uh, uh, when I spoke to one uh, uh, eyewitness on the ground, he is saying that the situation is not uh, the best to speak of. They are terrified, they are scared, and they... They fear anything might happen uh, going forward. So what they are calling for is that uh, there should be a reinforced security in the area where military and then the police should be dispatched the area to ensure their safety. I'm also told that this number or these people who went to the police stations are mostly made of locals from the Avaime, uh, Bato, and Mepe areas, and then some surrounding communities. The guy I spoke to mentioned that he can identify some of them as locals in the area. However, they are scared... Uh, the, 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 the incident might repeat itself, so they are calling for uh, police officers to be, uh, police and military officers to be uh, dispatched to the area to reinforce security in the area. Uh, stay with me, Fred Kwame Asari. I just want to point out to our viewers those are shots from the Pong at Timpoku Road where uh, the group of Western Togoland soldiers uh, blocked the route. You can see that the fire, um, as it set fire to tires. Uh, of course, the, their campaign is that they, they want to uh, secede from Ghana, be a, a country, want independence, want to be a country on their own. And Fred, listening to you uh, this morning, this looks like a well-planned, uh, was really well-planned, orchestrated by these Western Togoland soldiers. Tell us what you know about their workings. What do I know about their operations? You yeah, know? yeah. Okay, so uh, this group, like I have said, has been in existence for some time now. Uh, it is led by one, uh, my papa, who bet, the, who bet the door. The group previously was one, but then later on divided into two. However, one became dominant. But then the Western Togoland, that is the Western Togoland Foundation, uh, has been uh, in full force uh, operating for about for, for over 40 years to day. Uh, we, quite recently, their activities became, their activities became more uh, vibrant, where they, on two occasions, declared independence for uh, the Western Togoland, which I am told stretches from uh, the Volta region to OT upwards. Uh, there has also been issues about the, uh, the involvement of the, uh, uh, this area, the Ketchum North area, the Ketchum North and the southern part of the Volta region. They claim that they are not part of the Western Togoland and were not part of the plebiscite, the uh, 
founders of the Western Togoland claimed uh, was an agreement between Ghana and then the Western Togoland that after 50 years of independence, uh, the uh, Western Togoland should, should go independent or should be free uh, from the territories of Ghana as in the Western Togoland territory should become an independent country on its own. So I should say that uh, the activities uh, have been in full force. They, they have uh, places that they meet, they have WhatsApp groups that they disseminate information, and they, they've been active in, uh, on social media, I should also I should say. So, uh, with regards to the operations of the Western Togoland, it's a well organized group. But then, uh, let me also add that it is not the entire region that is in support of uh, this cause or the call for taxation of the Western Togoland. The, I, when I say the entire region, I mean the entire region. Uh, like the uh, voter regional minister said, just at my news, a uh, group of people are calling or championing this uh, independent cause. However, uh, from the look of things, it appears they, they really want to uh, undertake this objective and ensure they become successful in uh, this uh, venture. All right, Fred Kwame Asari, our voter region correspondent, we well, thank you for now. We'll come back to you shortly for some updates as we continue to follow uh, this breaking news. Joining us is Albert Yaoyang with uh, OneUp. Great to have you this morning. It's not the kind of news you'd have expected on the Friday morning. Uh, what's your reaction to what you've heard so far? Uh, good morning. Um, uh, the story keeps developing and it looks as if um, we need to strengthen our efforts to be able to uh, address it. Um, if they are blocking the road, um, we need to get there with the security, and that is what I'm hearing, if that is true, uh, to uh, be able to get them off the area so that normal life can go on in that area. Mm. And then we can engage them. I, I think that um, we have been making arrests as a country uh, whenever these things happen, and we have been doing investigations. I am wondering whether we have engaged them in a sustainable uh, communication to be able to get to the bottom of this. You know, like I indicated some time ago um, on uh, your you see your video, um, this action by this uh, group, you know, it, it probably did not just start, you know, it has been something that they have thought about over and over. Um, if one of their leaders is that old, as we read in the news, in the, in the news you know, so it means that he, he, he did not start just now, and his groups, his followers and all those other people involved did not just start you know, um, they have talked about it, they have planned it, and they have discussed it, they have, you know. And so, in me, as a country, we need to have a sustainable engagement with them to get to the bottom of this and to see what are the issues that really require addressing, you know. The other thing um, that I think we need to do, to think about uh, seriously, is how this can then become, the, the action of this group can then become an opportunity for other uh, uh, groups, you know, um, uh, to, to, to exploit, mm. uh, especially extremist activities. And now we get into elections, you know, how does it uh, become an opportunity for others? So we need to be very serious about this. Uh, the, the last time I heard about it was when uh, the, there was an alleged hoisting of a flag, you know, and I, I heard on air the Eastern Regional Minister and other people uh, talking um, on air, you know, about the fact that there were investigations going on. And and we, we seem to be dismissive sometimes, which I think that can be problematic for uh, the way we are handling it. So I think, as I indicated, we need to employ the security um, arrangement and we need to employ the soft approaches as well you know so that it does not become repetitive otherwise if it continues like this it can easily become an opportunity mm. I, I mean you you raise an important point that this is happening with just days to the elections but i want to go back to uh, a point you made earlier about how this was carefully planned and orchestrated uh, we're hearing that they attacked a police station made away with armories now I, i'm just 
trying to figure out how the security personnel didn't gather intelligence about this. I didn't get the question. So I'm asking, how is it that we didn't have some intelligence about this based on the point you made about the fact that this looked to be a well-planned uh, incident? Yes, um, of course, intelligence can never always be conclusive. You know, the, the, the uh, criminals or other people who also plan against intelligence, you can sometimes have their way out. You know, and I, I, as you mentioned, if we are aware of a group like this, then we should be mindful of the fact that they will be looking for resources to enable them to champion their cause. You know, and so um, intelligence, yes, they would be. Hello? Hello? Yes, please yeah. go ahead. Uh -huh. So the, the intelligence uh, agents will be doing their work, but, you know, like I indicated, it cannot be conclusive. And I, I think that we should have been very, very mindful of the fact that these people will be looking out for resources that will facilitate their work, you know. Be that as it may, I think that once it has happened, you know, the investigation to be able to recover these uh, 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 arms, you know, needs to be, be speeded up so that if that not stay in their hands, that can influence their operation. You know, that, that's the point that I can make on that. Right, and you also talked about engaging uh, these uh, secessionists but it looks like they are being emboldened by the day. I mean, to be able to block the route to a major road, they are really emboldened. Is engagement the way to go? Uh, that's why I talked about employing both approaches. You, you have to employ the hard approach, you know, making sure that um, you, you get some people who, who really offend the law, you know, um, to, to bring them to book in a way that you employ also the peace-building approach, you know, which is the soft approach, so that engagement, communication with them to find out what really are the issues and letting them even understand that this is not within the remit of the law, you know. Uh, but if we, we get them and at a point we get them off again, then it's like back and forth kind of thing, yes. Of course, they also continue to make demands. But like I indicated, once it looks like a planned thing over time, mm. you know, that is why you would, uh, we would do this then before we realize they employ a different strategy. So it's very sustainable and in terms of their I mean, in, uh, operation. And so we also need to uh, adopt a very sustainable approach so that we should be ahead of them in a way. You know, and mindful of the fact that these the actions of the so-called secessionist group you know, can become opportunities, mm. you know, that can now affect us generally. All right. Thank you so much, Albert Yaoyang, his national coordinator of one of uh, joining us on the phone with some perspective to this breaking news story. Once again, those are images from the Pong Atimpoku Road where uh, a group of Western Togoland soldiers this dawn block the route. Uh, we want to go to Isojaman FM's Odia Sempa joining us with uh, some more from where he is. Where are you this morning and what can you report? Yes, yeah, hello. Good morning to your listeners this morning. And uh, my name is Ike. As I speak with you, uh, I'm at the scene where the incident happened this dawn. And as I speak with you, the security agencies, I mean the military and then the police service, uh, have engaged the assessment and they've been able to offload the blocks from the road that now uh, cars are, you know, going and then coming. So now there is no anyone who is stranded here right now. Okay. Well, earlier in, in our shots, we saw a, a group of men wearing, clad in black, uh, black t-shirts, I believe, and uh, khaki uh, trousers. Uh, I, I should think that those are the people behind uh, what took place this morning. Uh, have you seen any of them around? Uh, as I spoke with you, immediately the military and then the police uh, personnel engaged them and then, uh, you know, they, they agreed to what the security agencies discussed with them. 
uh, immediately after offloading the blocks from the road, they, they, they vanished. Uh, they vanished. Okay. Uh, earlier when we spoke with our correspondent Fred Kwame Asari in the Volta region, he talked about the fact that residents were terrified uh, about the situation over there. Uh, what, what kind of sentiments are you picking up from the people in that area? Uh, right now, I think the only thing they were demanding uh, is that they have a portion of land here that belongs to them. I mean, the Western Togo land. So they want the government to hand over their, 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 their portion of land to them so they can also manage their own affairs. And the residents in the area, what has been their response to uh, the blockage of the road, the activities of the Western Togoland soldiers there? Um, I think two weeks now, they came here to mount their vehicles. And uh, the street agencies, uh, you know, came in to dismantle the billboards that they mounted. So today, around one... Uh, one thirty-five a.m. That they, you know, we we had a report that they blocked the road. So uh, I think uh, they are they, they are just telling the government, I mean, the authority to, you know, make sure that the, the, their portion of land over here should be handed over to 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 to, to them. And by then, the residents around this place, you know, weren't much aware of the activities or I mean the situation. Uh, so none of them, you know, came out. It was around just uh, just 6 a.m. that the, 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 most of them had the information uh, because of the noise and, you know, the noise that um, the stranded travelers were making that, you know, generated a whole, uh, you know, some kind of uh, awareness to the residents over here. And then they also came out. But um, nothing much happened. Uh, uh, during the incident, the, the, the police personnel wanted to give some warning shot, but the military officers calmed them down and uh, they, they also engaged them again with some kind of weapon. I think uh, they were able to, you know, offload the blocks from the road that as I speak with you, the, the road is free and cars are, you know, going coming. Okay, thanks very much for the update, that was uh, Odia Sempa with Isujaman FM. Um, he's telling us that the situation has been uh, brought under control. There is a free flow of traffic, I believe, at this moment, as the security personnel uh, have stepped in. Uh, joining me in studio, is in studio with me actually, is uh, uh, Joseph Akable. Joseph, important, uh, let's talk about the timing of this. Uh, Abe Yaoyang talked about the fact that we are just days to the elections and the group chose this time to do what they did. Yes, I mean, that raises lots of concerns. And, I mean, this looks like a carefully planned, I mean, operation like he put out there. And he makes the point that intelligence sometimes fails. Mm. Uh, but then again, it's a reminder that going into the election, we need to step up the security of the country because to be able to uh, carry out such operation well coordinated so that you're able to block the entry points into a region from 2 a.m. till now, it tells you that these are individuals who are able to move. And so questions emerge that we don't know, know roadblocks. How do they move and be able to gather mm. uh, at those points and carry out what they carry out? And, and we are told it's a, a group of 50 people. How they were able to do this uh, totally outwit our security personnel, if I should put it that way. It's worrying. Yes, and even uh, the report from Fred Kwame Asari about the police station. And then the yeah. regional minister, voter regional minister, confirming to us on radio that, I mean, three policemen are in the grips of at uh, these individuals we actually we actually what happened was we were trying to reach the police commander and one of the secessionist guys picked up the phone and said that yes they are they are the ones who have are taking over the place they are the ones who have blocked the road and that they have the police officer in their custody and two others he also told us that one of them is injured the original minister later came on to confirm this to us and tell us that i mean they are trying mm. uh, to recapture them and, and rescue and, them and, and we're talking about the fact that they are now emboldened to do what they do and questions the approach uh, in dealing with these people. We had Albert Yaoyang talk about the fact that we should engage them more, but if there's cause to arrest one or two people we found to be uh, breaking the law, we should be doing that. What do you think? He's the expert, but obviously the approach that we've used over the past is to arrest, uh, put them before court to discontinue the case and try and engage them, yet it keeps happening. In fact, 
after Papa V, who is they said to be the leader of the group, after he had declared independence, he actually left the country. The security agencies were on a manhunt for him for weeks. They couldn't find him up until now. Mm -hmm. I think it's getting gotten to the level where we need to arrest them, put them before court, and take them through a process because uh, the nation needs to speak boldly that these are people uh, who don't have a right to do what they are doing. I mean, Ghana is a sovereign state. When people wanted their own regime, we saw what happened. Our territories are well defined in our constitution, and there's no such process for this particular move that they are pushing. And so, I mean, they need to put a stop to it. And like they, they make the point, these are not people whom you can say that is a general sentiment that cuts across the regions. We've heard from MPs across both aisles, the MPP side, the NDC side, who have all condemned such occurrence in the area. And so uh, this is the, uh, the time, this is the height that we've got into. We shouldn't exceed this at any point. And so we expect the security agencies uh, to bring this under control. The Ghana Police Service Facebook handle, uh, they've actually put out a post uh, just about 39 minutes ago. Okay. And uh, it says, good morning, Ghana. Commuters to and from Accra, who aveime adidome mepe akuse so gakope aflau are likely to experience traffic due to security operations within those areas anybody traveling on any of these roads should exercise caution and so uh, they choose to term it as a security operation but i mean we we have our reporters on the ground they are telling us what exactly is happening yeah and uh, thankfully the situation is being normalized we are told that uh, the security personnel have stepped in and uh, traffic is flowing uh, this one. Thanks very much, Joseph Akabli. If you just joined us, the news is that in their quest for independence, a group of Western Togolan soldiers at dawn today uh, blocked the route at uh, the Pong Atimpoku Road. To make a point, uh, you can see those visuals we picked up from what happened at dawn. Uh, obviously, the group of secession is there making the point about their quest for independence. We keep following the story for you with some more analysis on this program. The AM show. My name is Daryl Kwao. Mama V. Oso Abuaje is coming in in a moment. Uh, and we'll have sports news coming up next. Do stay tuned.